Hey there, welcome to my place, come on in. This is where I live, it's also where I, I work. And uh, got some of my paintings hanging up here and some of my works here. But back here is where all of the fun happens. These paintings that you see here, the ones in the other room, and this one here, and those are doors I found after Hurricane Sandy. Uh, when Hurricane Sandy hit here in Jersey City, we had five feet of water outside. But as the water receded, there was a huge debris field all over the place. And there was a lot of debris, a lot of pieces of buildings and automobiles and things like that. And I found these doors and I bleached them and cleaned them, you know, disinfected them. I brought them in here, and then I started to paint. I experiment with it. I, I, I sometimes let the, the, the dust and the elements speak for themselves. I let them go where they want to go. And sometimes it talks back to you. In 2005, my father passed away. The doctors had prescribed him with so much medication, uh, more than he could probably ever consume, you know, in a lifetime, let alone two months that he had to survive from diagnosis to his death. So I had uh, an enormous amount of uh, prescription pills left over, and I just put, mixed them into the paint. I crushed them down. There's a lot of pills in here. There's, there's crushed, potent, medications, anti-cancer medications, anti-anxiety medications. And I was obviously departing from the figure. I wasn't trying to do a portrait or anything of anyone. It's more of a, a release of some form. And uh, you can see the difference. I mean, this is an older painting. You know, this is what I'm doing now. You know, the difference. But this was, I think, an important process for me. This has uh, minced razor blades and has rice in there. This is an early piece. Sometimes I write right here. I have a whole collection of, of notebooks, you know, over the years, since 1983 or something, since I'm a kid, uh, of journals. And that helps me not focus so much on the writing but focus on the process and just not be hung up with, with editing at that point. This is where I edit. As you can see, it's a wonderful mess. Working with words, you're using language, so you're restricted to a certain amount of um, words in our language. You know, is, is not so much uh, uh, putting words on paper, but actually taking the entire, for example, the English language and removing all the unnecessary words for that poem and leaving the 30 or 40 words that are in there, or 50, or whatever it takes for the poem to be finished. The sun shines through the window like a fireball. No, the sun is a fireball shining through the window. So there's a difference, you see? Um, she's, she's like a gazelle the way she walks. She is a gazelle. I've been writing, that's my first love, was my poetry and my writing. I've been writing since I'm very young, I'm a teenager, and, and uh, the painting came much later. You're all under arrest for giving in to your oppressors. Anything you don't do or won't say can and will be used against you. You are hereby charged with complacency in the first degree, possession of ambivalence, and failure to obey a distress signal from your fellow citizens. You have the right to remain violent, shouting down the big machine with words of rage till daybreak. Instead, you crouch down in silence, drinking, smoking, choking, where your own family stands on trial. You have the right to bear arms up against the pale face of injustice. Break down barbed walls of dogma. You have the right to burn the burkers, 
the straitjacket, the suffocating drapery that smothers your daughter's dreams. You have the right to make a left turn. You have the right not to be straight. You got the right to do the right thing, but you're all guilty. Guilty of everything. You have the right to not go gentle into that good night. You have the right to fight, to break open the pale face of hatred and shout it down once and for all, all human race. You have the right to steal the keys from freedom's door that are dangling from tyranny's drooling jaw. You have the right to infiltrate, to violate, to launch a coup d'etat. You have the right to break in and enter. Instead, you break down and bolt, abandoning naked children that are lying, dying, crying beside crooked gates of hell. You have the right to overthrow the king whose castle's walls your own hands built. So you're all guilty, guilty of everything. Guilty of lethargy. Guilty of medicating your life away from the harsh truths that daylight brings. Guilty of talking the talk but not walking the walk. Guilty of not working for peace. Guilty of not working for peace. Guilty of not working for peace. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Get against the wall. You've been condemned and convicted for your crimes against the people. Look up at the sun through blindfolded eyes until it hurts you to see. And remember those you betray. And remember, yes, we're all guilty. Guilty of everything. <laughs>